We are inside of one of the most beautiful arenas that the country of Canada has to offer for sports, the Videotron Center. We are ready for the co-main event. Alvarez on the right side of your screen, Barrage on the left. The tail of the tape is brought to you by Corona, who brings you the best in boxing. It's a light heavyweight bout, but it's at a catch weight with the last minute opponent change for Alvarez. Uh, Barrage allowed to come in under 180, the catch weight. So 179 and 178, the fighters weights respectively. A considerable height and reach advantage for the undefeated Alvarez. Time now for the crowd here to meet the fighters. And for that, we go to ring announcer Roland Mayotte. In the red corner, fighting out of Albany, New Zealand, with a record of 27 wins, four losses, and one draw. Dans le coin rouge, d'Albany, en Nouvelle-Zélande, avec une fiche de 27 victoires, 21 par mise en le combat, quatre défaites et un verdict nul. Robert the Butcher Barrett. And in the blue corner, dans le coin bleu, fighting out of Montreal, Quebec. With a record of 19 wins, 10 by knockouts, no losses. Et dans le coin bleu de Montréal, avec une fiche de 19 victoires, 10 par mise en de combat, aucune défaite. Elena Storm Halvara! Listen, gentlemen, I want a good, clean fight. Remember, protect yourself at all times and obey my command at all times, okay? This is good right here. This is good right here, okay? Anything below that is low. Anything below this is low, okay, guys? Touch them up. Let's go. Referee Marlon Wright given the instructions. We take a look at the rules for the fight, which have one little different twist here in Canada. We'll be using the Quebec rules, which is no standing eight count, no three. There is a three knockdown rule. That is the major change. In the event of an accidental foul, we will go to the scorecards after four rounds complete. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round. We are ready for the co-main event. The bell rings, and it's time for a statement. So says the man in the black trunks with the black trim, Later Alvarez. Guys, he says, look, at. he knows that the boxing world will look at him with a last minute change of opponent, a guy who flies in from New Zealand for this fight, and they'll look at it like it's gotta be a walkover. He says he wants to set up that fight with Adonis Superman Stevenson, if Superman can take care of business in the main event. To do that, he needs to do what? Well, of course he has to impress. I mean, even though, you know, it's hard to impress with a guy that you haven't had a chance to really put under that microscope, but boxing is boxing. This man got two hands, he can't throw but one at a time. So the bottom line is you gotta get the job done. He's got a very educated lead hand. I like his jab. I like his lead hook. He needs to use those weapons to get Barrage off balance, which he often is if he's going to land that knockout shot. Get him off balance and finish him. Yeah, educated I... lead hand. Yeah, the very left, good. The jab. He says it's the best in the division. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't know too many people that's made a living off a of jab unless you're Larry Holmes or somebody <laughs> like that. But we're going to see, can he set something up right. behind that superior jab? He's great with it. Can he use to set up the power shot? That's the question. Remember, he was getting ready for Chad Dawson, who was more boxer than puncher. He was getting ready for an orthodox guy. This guy's southpaw. They're those little things that might trip him up, might make him start a little slow rounds one and two. Well, you know, a guy like Chad Dawson, who's been to the top, you know, he had two wins against me. And uh, But, you know, they're calling guys like Chad Dawson because, you know, Chad Dawson hasn't been able to take a punch lately. I wish somebody called me. <laughs> uh. And Chad Dawson in that spot where he's, he's lost a lot of his sharpness recently, but he still has a big name, but couldn't make this fight. I take it we would still be fighting at a catch weight had they called you. <laughs> I don't know if he'd go up your way, my beloved partner. I was just sticking it to the heavyweight side. Yeah, I got you. Break, break, 
feel out first couple of minutes for both fighters. You heard a pretty good uh, rousing ovation for Alvarez. Born in Colombia, fights out of Montreal, about a two and a half hour drive to the southwest of where we sit tonight. He says, this is my, this is my home, this is my area. Wants to prove to the crowd that he could be a championship level fighter. Although in the past, he's fought in this area, in the province, and the crowd has, uh, let's just say, implored him to show more action. A lot of people feel pressure when they're in their hometown. There's a lot you have to deal with. He says it. I came out stiff. I didn't show everything I could do when I fought at home. I'll not change that tonight. Hey! One of ten in the books. Close up look at the 19 and 0. A later Alvarez. Get his, his instructions. I believe it was French being spoken to him there. He's trilingual, speaks Spanish, his native tongue from Colombia, and French, residing out of Montreal now, speaks a little bit of English as well. Spanish is most comfortable language. Watch full fights from Premier Boxing Champions and Bellator MMA on the Spike app. Available now for iOS and Android. That was a quick left as uh, Barrage dove in. Alvarez was able to adjust the angle of the punch. Made contact on the tip of the nose. Not a lot behind it, but still a, a, an accurate punch. See when Barrett is going to start taking some risks here. So far, he's on the outside. That's Alvarez's game with that lead hand with the jab. He's comfortable out here. Has the reach advantage. You know, when, when is Barrett going to you know, flip the script and try something big? And you can tell he's waiting for it. Right, you know, he's got, he has his back against the wall, last minute replacement and all. But still, I mean, for the first three, four rounds, he should give a, a good account of himself. Uh, and again, you know, Alvarez can't sleep with this guy because this guy still has power in his punch. Hit him behind the head. Don't hit him behind the head. Talked at the beginning of the show about the uh, the road, or I guess I should say flight plan that Barrage had to, to take to get here. Found out about the fight last week, flew in on Tuesday here to Quebec City. It's a 16-hour time change. It's 1 p.m., a little after 1 p.m. Saturday back in New Zealand. You notice that uh, Bears is moving to the left. He's actually going into the power, the right hand power of uh, of his of his opponent, of Alvarez. A lot of times Southpaws do that. They're trying to set up a counter shot when he throws that right hand, but it hasn't been available thus far. It could be he's moving away also from that jab and lead hook, which has been effective so far. He's trying to take the power away from that as he moves away from it, but. Well, I definitely haven't seen that jab Alvarez was talking about. <laughs> yeah, he, he's been throwing it out there, yeah, but hasn't been able to snap the head back as much. And you have quite a jab yourself there, right, champ. Right, right. Mostly distance fighting through two rounds in Quebec. Hand to hand touch, you're throwing your right hook upwards. You see both fighters there, Robert Barrage, 27-4 and 1 on the left side of your screen. A little bit of wear underneath the right eye of Barrage. Alvarez taking a couple extra seconds on the stool here prior to round number three. Get the bell, and we're underway. Antonio, you were talking about Barrage and kind of where he stands with the uh, Southpaw Orthodox matchup. Barrage, his people told us. He's an awkward southpaw. He fights uh, a, a little bit. They use the word awkward 
that can mean unpredictable. Hey, hey, that hey, can stop, mean stop. good things for no the opposite. Well, I think stop. in this fight, you definitely have to uh, make it a rough and tough fight, gritty, you know, because you don't want Alvarez to stay out there in the pocket and be comfortable. He has to make this uncomfortable for him. And, man, he can do that by making it a rugged, tough fight for Alvarez. Which I think he's starting to do in this third round. He does not want to box the boxer. He wants to brawl him. Alvarez, a decorated amateur. You can tell he has good fundamentals. He's not going to win this fight on the outside. Winner of the Pan American game, so yeah. we know he has the skill and the talent. Alvarez, that is. Yep. Alvarez, a member of the Colombian hey. Olympic team back in 2008 in Beijing. Fought at light heavyweight there as well. Alvarez needs to start trusting that jab, and he got to start landing that jab. Right now, it seems like he's just falling with it, and he's coming up short. He has to put two or three jabs together, and what he's doing now, he's hell-bent on counter-punching, trying to land something significant. That awkwardness of Barrett, in, in previous fights we looked at, He's often off balance because he's leaning so hard into all of his shots. It's part of that awkwardness is he's not always over his hips, he's not always over his feet. But again, when you look at Alvarez, who has a superior jab, he say, and the guy is shorter than him and he has that reach, he has to utilize that jab. If you can't hit him with the jab, you can't hit him with much more than that. But does that southpaw stance maybe make that a little bit more difficult for him? Probably. And Barrett just landed a nice little yep. overhand right hand there. But he's at the level now where southpaw or conventional should make a difference. And I'm sure they knew they was facing a southpaw tonight. his waistband there saying familia family very important to this man whose family is actually back in colombia remember this man resides in montreal trains in montreal only sees his family once or twice a year last time he saw his wife jessica and his seven-year-old daughter ida was december hopes to be able to see them again by the end of the year both fighters will see round four Good looking wide shot of the Centre Videotron. I attempted that in French. That Jimmy squinted his eyes. Oh, you thought it was good? Oh, that was great. Now, <laughs> you don't speak French either, so I'm yeah. not sure if you should be the ultimate judge of that. No, seriously, great. It's a gorgeous arena. Just opened 10 months ago. 18,000 seat arena. They hope to lure an NHL franchise to Quebec. Of course, the Quebec Nordiques skated here for so many years in this town until they left. And the French Canadians loving their hockey. They would love to get another team back here. In the meantime, they host uh, major artists. Justin Bieber played here last year. Metallica opened it up. Celine Dion, the famous Canadian, is coming here next month. Great sporting events. The Sweet Science. Glad you're with us, PBC on Spike. Just a little exchange there between Alvarez and Barrage. 40 seconds into round number four. No big shots so far from either fighter. Barry just done that a few times. He'll throw a power shot and kind of lean into it and clinch. He doesn't give himself enough distance to follow up on it. There's that jab. Nice scoring blow by Alvarez.
Okay, Spike Sports presents two world-class events in back-to-back -back nights at the end of August. We're going to have Bellator MMA and then PBC on Spike back-to-back -back nights. It starts Friday, August 26th. MMA superstar Benson Henderson faces hard-charging former featherweight champion Patricio Pitbull. That's Bellator MMA, the first of two great nights of combat sports here on Spike. Friday, August 26th, it begins at 10 o'clock live here on Spike. Just missing with the right is Alvarez. As the final seconds are ticking down here to round number four. Some people thought this would be a very quick fight. As it seemed to be a mismatch on paper, we'll go to the fifth. Any of his punches affected you yet? No. Good. Because they're not going to. You're going to keep moving and keep your hands up like you have, Robin. Need you to put there more you than see two a little punches. cumulative effect of that. When you come in here, according to Alvarez, it's Alvarez's world class there, jab. Right? You're going to chuck him right eye. Starting to see some redness. A little bit of puffiness. Barrage electing in between himself. rounds to remain standing, a la George Foreman late in his career. While Alvarez just about takes every last second of it, here's the echo of the bell before they pull his stool out of the corner. And off we go into round number five. So the fighters come out active. So Barrett wants to keep it in that awkward pocket range. Hasn't been able to keep the fight there. He's got it there in spurts. Hasn't been able to really stake his claim inside chest to chest. Because on the outside, Alvarez has been on him. Yeah, he's backing up too much. He's going to have to press the guy with some head movement and some upper body movement. I mean, he's just circling. But it's not allowing him to get in and, and land anything effective. No body shots, no head shots, no nothing. He's going to have to take some type of risk and hold his ground. There comes a time where you have to hold your ground. There was a nice shot that the crowd reacts to. I think the guard was up there for Alvarez, but Barrage makes some solid contact. He's going to have to move the target, like I was telling you earlier with that head movement. He can get Alvarez to extend a little bit and maybe reach and then find the open. That's it. Nice See him loading up one big shot. There you go. Ramez, for a guy who's been around the block in the amateurs and the pros, you're going to see that punch coming. We talk about over and over how he's brags about his jab, the lead hook. We've seen that. He hasn't needed his right hand much of a factor in this fight. He's taking on Southpaw. He needs to do that. He needs to get that right hand engaged. Well, he hasn't been huge. Yeah, he's boxing right now, and uh, he's staying in one mode. I mean, you got to have different gears in this game. And uh, he's talking about fighting Superman Stevenson, man. He's going to have to bring more to the table. But a lot of times, I mean, fighters look less than impressive and get the big fight rather than looking impressive. And then being avoided by, you know, everybody. <laughs> Not showing what you got. It's going to be important, but I think he wants to finish tonight, but he needs to activate that right hand. And you see that redness getting more pronounced on the right side, just below the right eye of Barrage. But the left jabs have not yielded the opportunity for the big right cross just yet. Or at least if the opportunity was there, the undefeated fighter hasn't been able to capitalize to this point. Still apparently in control. Barrage takes a bit of a stumble at the end of the round. Welcome back to PBC on Spike. Adonis Stevenson, the WBC light heavyweight champ, getting ready for our main event, his seventh title defense after a near 11-month layoff from fighting. We saw him get the knockout win last time on Spike. We'll see if he can get it again here tonight, gentlemen. Dana, thank you very much. Check back with you in just a little bit. Welcome back ringside, everyone. As the two combatants come to the middle of the ring for round number six.
<laughs> mentioned a couple of rounds ago about Alvarez's family, his wife and daughter still being back in Columbia. And that is not by choice. As we said, he is uh, a self-proclaimed family man. It's uh, visa issues that he hopes to get um, ironed out so his family can eventually move to Montreal to be with him here in this beautiful country of Canada. But he says they'll, they'll be watching. They'll find out at the results here back in Columbia tonight as soon as this goes final, which to this point we don't know. No big uh, potential knockdown or knockout shots we've seen from either fighter yet. Pleased to be joined here tonight by the next member of our broadcast team, PBC historian Corey Erdman with his unofficial scorecard. Corey, how do you see it? Guys, right now I have it five rounds to right, right. At, at this point, Robert Barrage has just opposed to contact, so it's hard to give him any rounds. The guys who have troubled Alvarez in the past in his career, for the most part, Prieto and Andy Gardner a couple years ago, they've been guys who have pressured him, and thus far, Robert Barrage hasn't shown the willingness to be able to do that. Corey, thank you. So a clean sweep on his scorecard. Guys, I, I take it no uh, disagreement here. I don't think if Alvarez wants to make an impression here, he's going to have to probably gamble a little bit and give Barrett a little false sense of security, open them up a little bit, and then land those type of shots. Right now, he's just dressed down in defense and uh, not giving this guy anything. Sometimes you got to bait him in and trick him in order to knock him out. Usually when Baron Barrett has tried to get offensive, it's been one or two big punches like that, and he falls into a clinch. Unless you time him come in, it's hard to get offensive with a guy like that. He hasn't given Alvarez a ton of opportunities. It's hard to counterpunch a guy who's not punching very much. Exactly. And that's what I meant by Alvarez, allowing him to open up a little bit, not take anything dangerously, but just give him a false sense of security and slam the door. Muscle sends Barrage back. The uh, awkward clench broken up by our referee, Marlon Wright. And on we go. Less than 30 seconds remaining in round number six. I mean, guys, let's come out and say it. Alvarez is not known as a knockout artist. 19 0, yes, 10 knockouts to his credit. They're knockout artists and they're TKO artists. So maybe he can throw enough punches to get in, get a stoppage. He's not a one-punch knockout kind of guy, but he can increase the volume. Well said. Well, they've gone to the frozen metal for the uh, the under eye damage there of Barrage. Three after that snake charmer when you pivot out, do it as well. Good work, bro. Keep it up. Listening to the. New Zealand accented English from his corner man. Well, that phantom jab must be doing some work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <we're good>. yeah. <laughs> Just built it up too much. He's been doing a good job with the jab. Stand behind that. Barrage's guys tell us that uh, Barrage can't get fights in New Zealand. Has often had to hop the island over to Australia to take some fights. And even in that fight scene, looking for more action elsewhere in the world. And that's why he was available for a, a last minute fight. Hop the plane, and here he is tonight. For what it's worth, Corey Erdman, who we heard from last round, who at that point had to fight five rounds to none, Alvarez gave the sixth round on his unofficial scorecard to Barrage. So there's that. <laughs> Could be a slight confidence builder. But Alvarez in the last couple rounds, a little more willing to mix it up, a little more willing to get in there to land punches. Not that willing. <laughs> yeah, not that willing. But more in the last two rounds than right. it was earlier on in the fight. And I I like for him if he can. He, he's letting Barrett get away like that. He has to cut that ring off and make him go the other direction. It's just been too easy for Barrett to get out of those traps. Right. 
And as we're halfway through round number seven, I'll remind you that the strong rumor, almost reports out there say, if Alvarez wins tonight, Dana mentioned this at the top of the show, and if Alvarez wins tonight, and Adonis Stevenson takes care of business in the main event, that that could be the matchup for what would then be the eighth title defense for Superman. But Alvarez to this point, solidly in control by all of our eyeballs, yet not overwhelmingly impressive. And he's going to have to add some more tricks to his arsenal, man, if he's going to be able to compete with the top echelons of the light heavyweight division. He's just too, uh, he's too honest of a fighter. You know, you can read him like a book, and you know, you just can't do that if you want to step up and, and be champion and defeat some of these guys that have been at the top for so long. Look, we're in this business, all right? Honesty is not a virtue in boxing. <laughs> that was the word that I attached to. It is not at all. All right, he'll never make it in this game, to be honest. Come on. Oh, a nice right hand over the top after he, uh, I think he threw an up cut, but then came back over the top with the right hand. Snap Barrage's head sideways momentarily. And Barrage went right in for the clinch off of that. Did not like that at all. We'll be back for round eight. Thomas Williams Jr., the challenger in our title defense tonight for Donna Stevenson. God love the confidence, though. He told us just yesterday that if you are a betting man, he's ready to make someone very rich tonight. That main event still coming up, guys. Looking forward to it, Dana. As a couple of uh, colorful personalities will clash along with two quality fighters. Well, more than quality, two super fighters in the main event after we're finished with this one, which is now, guys, gone fairly deep here into the eighth round. Here's a man who w said he was training in, in uh, Barrage in the black with uh, white trim trunks. Said he was training for a fight anyway, but this is a short notice fight in a far off land in an absolutely different time zone for him. How do you see his conditioning so far? Well, obviously, you know, uh, Alvarez hadn't really landed anything significant to the body to take his legs from him. And uh, he's still up. He's still in this fight. I mean, he has a puncher's chance. Um, I think his condition is fairly well. Great counter punch by Barry just now. Nice. Left. Left Nothing is. He hasn't kind of had the kind of volume that's going to wear him out. He's been very selective with his punches, which is why, partly why he's losing rounds. But he's been selective with when he's been offensive. Partly because he has his legs under him right now. The crowd wants to get into this. This is watching the undercard earlier. This is a pretty knowledgeable boxing crowd. It's a great boxing area for those of you who have never been to this part of the world. Folks in Quebec love their sports, love their boxing. Obviously, the Montreal boxing scene very robust. They they want they want to rise to their feet. Haven't been given much of an opportunity to this point. And now Alvarez content to stick his chin out there and drop the fists down to the thighs, trying to coax Barrage into something he might regret. Like you said, champ, take some risks, bait him in. I think he's trying to do that. Barrage so far not taking the bait. Nice left hook. That was a nice left hook, yep. and he stayed in the pocket. And that's what he needs to do more of. Let up. Let Barry throw his punches, but you got to be in the pocket in order to counter punch. He seemed to be a counter punch, a counter puncher, so take a chance. He threw a punch behind his back there when they were in the clinch as well. <laughs> Referee Marlon Wright didn't necessarily notice it, or perhaps my eyes deceived me. A lot of times you hear fighters say, hey, I was in the gym, I was preparing. And I think Barrett told the truth because there's no way he could have been totally out of shape and uh, still be standing here with eight tough rounds uh, in the books. Barrage, a man of few words when we met with him at the fighters meetings. Uh, his corner men did most of the talking. He didn't really have much to say. Just said he wanted to get in there and mix it up. Did tell us he was very hungry. We meet with the fighters prior to the weigh-in. They always hunger before the fight. <laughs> yeah, That's a universal sentiment. <laughs> 
Il faut le lancer, le Hundo. Tu peux pas attendre après lui. Je veux voir des jambes, OK? Je veux que tu commences le assalto avec un peu de rebond. You're looking at a man who feels that at points of his pro career, he's been overlooked. Hasn't gotten the title shots when he feels he's deserved them. He's run his record to 19-0. He's facing an opponent who took the fight on short notice. Heavily, heavily favored Box. is Alvarez. And yet now we're in the ninth of 10 rounds. And his opponent hasn't teetered much at all. You would figure a knockout would be the way to make a statement that you would want or deserve that title shot. But so would a record of 20 and 0 if you could get there, however you could get there. But you also have to remember that that could put a lot of pressure on Alvarez in his hometown, needing the knockout, could be a little tight because of that. That need to impress, that need to do more. Well, he's, be frustrated. he's definitely looked better away. I mean, uh, that's what was in the notes, that he had two impressive wins outside of uh, Quebec. And uh, it seemed like every time he fights home, he tightens up. Maybe the pressure and the need to look impressive get to him. That being said, he is fighting an awkward southpaw. The guy who, you know, runs in with one punch has stayed tight, has moved back a lot. Hard to look good against a guy like that. Now you see him sitting there, and he's working on off his defense. He's letting Alvarez throw, and he's there for the counter. He needs to do a lot more of that to open this guy up and maybe land something that really hurts him. There was a left and a right. It scored both times. But did not appear to put Barrage in trouble. Although now appears that blood is coming from the mouth of the underdog. And he's closer than he's been all night. He's allowing Barrett to throw those punches, and he's there for the counter. Also looks like in this round, Barrett's wearing down a little bit more. We're seeing no particular punch doing a ton of damage, but we're seeing the wear on his face. We're seeing him slow down with his footwork a bit. Could be taking its toll. Wait, wait, don't punch, don't punch. Barrett trying to hit a home run with that overhand left. Well, I think we're at the point where a decision is just out of the question. He needs to put Alvarez on the floor. He's going to let this fight slip away. Good body shot by Alvarez. Alvarez has done a lot of damage in this round. Well, it was scheduled for 10, and it'll go to the 10th. Now it's time to stick deep. You've got heaps of motivation. You want, what I want you to do, except when you... I, no, don't worry about that. You've got to catch it or something. Listen, I need you to move your feet a little bit faster for these last three minutes. When he turns and misses, you have to jump Only on three it. minutes remaining in this light heavyweight bout. The man on the left has shown a lot of cut, heart, a lot of guts. With all the circumstances, just to pick up this fight, get here, and be here, and force this deep into the final round. The man on the right has outclassed his opponent to this point by our minds. But can he finish with a flurry? Has not really appealed to the crowd much. Alvarez, you would think comfortable on all of the judges' scorecards to this point. But himself saying, I need an impressive performance, as there you see it, just one round on our unofficial scorecard from Corey Erdman, or Erdman in favor of Barrage. So eight to one to this point for Alvarez, who, uh, well, after a, a quick break, dove back in there. Through that snapping jab. Nice overhand left by Barrage, but didn't back Alvarez off. And again, 
We haven't gotten a sense so far in this fight that Alvarez is impressed with Barrage's power. He's landed a couple of grand lefts, but none have really rung his bell. None have made him back off. He's going to let it flow. This is a round to do it. Yeah, but the converse could be said, too. Barrage has not really wobbled in this fight. And, and you're talking about a fighter who hopes to face one of the hardest punchers in the world in his next fight with Adonis Stevens. It's definitely an uphill battle for Alvarez. But like I said, he has the skill. And maybe this is just a bad style matchup. You never know. But uh, looking at him from this point, I mean, he has the ability. He just, like I said, he should have changed his rhythm, changed his style a little bit. You got to have more than just one trick at this level. I don't hear Alvarez's trainer, Mark Ramsey, yelling for some type of uh, closing. Flurry, I suppose you gotta let your fighter know when it's time to do that. But his body has to tell him there's only one minute left as now there's heavy damage on the right side of Barrage's face. There you see it. Beaten down. 50 seconds to try and close. Finally got Barrage to open up and he's landing some terrific counter punches. But can he show some power that he hasn't shown so far in this fight in this last 30 seconds? He's been the better boxer. He's fought well from the outside. He's used a lead hand well and a few right hands. But he's yet to really do that one punch damage. That body work from Alvarez late is really punishing Barrage. Oh, right and Barrage. He can't even stand up. Yeah, he was, uh, sometimes he fights. Awkwardly, that was an awkward clinch there, but it gave him a bit of a breather as they now have 10 seconds remaining. And the crowd rises. They went the distance. It appeared one-sided, but you never know. You never know. <laughs> How did they score it? <laughs> Did Alvarez push his record to 20 and 0? We find out next. Well, just about everyone in attendance thinks it was a clean sweep for the undefeated fighter Alvarez. The only three opinions that matter, the judges. With those scorecards, here's Roland Mayotte. The decision, la decision. Judge Eno, Juge Eno, 99-90. 99-90, Alvarez, Judge Gauthier, Juge Gauthier, 98-92, 98-92, Alvarez, Judge Roussel, le Juge Roussel, 98-92, 98-92, Alvarez, the winner and still undefeated, le gagnant, toujours la vaincu, Helder Storm Alvarez! Well, you can judge for yourself how impressive it was. It certainly was one-sided, and the only thing that matters is there's still a zero in the right column of his one-loss record. 20 and 0. Now later. And